Good morning, everyone, and good time of the day. Um, today, I'll be your host for the uh, webinar. We will discuss um, um, how you can address the um, ESG data management challenges, in particular when it comes to the energy and the environmental aspects with the platforms like the Energy Management Solutions. A uh, quick introduction uh, to myself and our company. Uh, my name is Alua. I am a senior account executive um, for UK and Ireland, specifically um, focusing on energy um, platform and energy products. Uh, prior to joining uh, Spacewell, I was um, in real estate sector on um, investment advisory and um, asset management side of things. So kind of bring, bridging the gap between um, the clients that we're working with and um, the solution that we're offering. Um, my specific focus uh, for kind of the UK market is to grow our partnership and um, nurture the existing clients within uh, real estate um, verticals. So today, um, before we jump into the uh, webinar, I'd like to share a bit more about our company and how um, our experience kind of relates to the knowledge that you um, learned today. So Spacewell is a part of a wider company called Nemechek. Uh, Nemechek is one of the largest listed um, SaaS vendors in Europe. Um, with the 50 years of experience, they own um, 14 or 13 now software brands that covers the entire real estate sector from um, design and the build planning and then operational um, side of the business. So you'll see on this slide that the space well comes in in the operate and manage um, kind of stage of the real estate assets. Um, with the 2 uh, million users worldwide currently connecting to our platforms and over 100,000 buildings um, currently being monitored and um, operated by Spacewell um, Energy Workplace and Management. We offer a lot of different um, functionalities to help you visualize and monitor um, your real estate portfolio. Um, now, the important thing to kind of highlight before we jump into the, um, the webinar is that we just a software vendor, vendor so we work closely with um, partners on the ground who do the installations and maintenance of devices, when it comes to smart buildings, technology, and IoT. So you can see some of them listed here. We are fully white label solutions, so um, you might not see or be familiar with um, our brands, but um, we are at the back um, of powering the solutions of our um, partners. And, um, sorry, there you go. So now we can um, move into the topic. The, all the boring and admin stuff is done. Um, so let's see um, what are the main kind of drivers of um, the that's pushing real estate companies to implement more comprehensive ESG strategies um, today. We know that um, obtaining the validated um, data for more comprehensive ESG reporting is one of the key challenges for real estate companies. Um, and uh, we will talk about um, how the energy management platform can not only help you um, improve your operational efficiency, but also um, obtain valuable data to measure and improve um, companies' overall sustainability journey. Now, when it comes to the um, factors driving the EHG adoption for the real estate, regulations is not a surprise, it's one of the most significant driver. Um, governments and international bodies are increasingly imposing stringent regulations and um, uh, to ensure kind of a sustainable developments and operations of real estate assets. For instance, the EU CSRD directive um, pushes companies um, to be more um, transparent in their environmental and social impact um, and, and the initiatives with um, uh, things like national energy efficiency standards and uh, carbon reduction committees further um, compelling real estate uh, companies to integrate these two principles to comply with different laws and avoid penalties. Um, investor demand is um, Another crucial factor um, that's um, driving the adoption of the ESG these days, there's a growing trend among investors to um, uh, look into more impact and ethical investing, where they seek to allocate uh, capital to companies that demonstrate the ESG, uh, strong ESG performance. Um, institutional, both institutional and private um, equity firms, they're increasingly prioritizing successful sustainability metrics um, as a part of the investment criteria. So the shift is um, driven by the recognition that companies with um, comprehensive ESG and sustainability plans are uh, positioned better for long-term success and risk management and overall financial performance. 
Um, now, tenant expectations, um, not another um, factor that's driving the ESG adoptions. Um, a lot of modern tenants and um, employees for both residential and commercial assets, um, they're seeking properties that offer more sustainable, healthy um, living and working environments, which includes factors like energy efficiency, um, green building materials, and um, superior air um, indoor air quality. So the companies who can offer and meet those expectations, um, they protect themselves from risking um, the loss of um, talent and um, tenants to more sustainably focused companies. And to, in addition to that, the most of the um, companies who are adopting the energy efficiency initiatives, they can drive their consumption and operational costs down and therefore make their properties a bit more attractive to um, tenants and investors alike. Um, all, of, all of this kind of um, leading to the factor that's the risk mitigation for your assets, essentially um, the things like climate change that possess significant risk for real estate companies, um, including uh, physical damage from extreme weather events or regulatory risks um, to carbon emission, uh, related to carbon emission and energy use, um, driving the adaptation adoption of the ESG uh, principles within the real estate. So um, it's important for the companies to identify, assess and mitigate this risk, risk, this risks more effectively in um, a more timely manner. Technological advancements, last but not least, like um, smart building technology, IoT, um, and data analysis provide real-time insights into the energy use, the environmental and social impacts, um, and these technologies facilitate better decision-making and um, optimize resource use and enhance um, the overall sustainability and performance of the buildings. Now, when it comes to the success of those ESG principles, um, and initiatives. It's um, a not an isolated process. It's a product of the uh, cross-departmental collaboration and uh, stakeholder engagement. So the focus has shifted for just um, collecting the data for the strategic planning, um, from the collecting the data to the strategic planning and emphasizing goals and um, desired outcomes. So this transformation requires um, an involvement in the collective effort from different teams like uh, facility managers, um, IT managers, your PM and AMs, um, as well as the uh, ESG teams. So we all know that the real estate sector and more what is what we're seeing in, across our customers is that they're a bit, um, they adopt technology at a bit of a slower pace compared to its peers uh, across different industries. And um, But it's important to promote the data centralization and um, Kind of the overall digitalizations of the business. Um, this process is usually kind of safeguarded and overseen by um, IT departments, where um, the main goal is to kind of make sure that the data, the sensitive data is protected and um, um, essentially there's no um, information leaking on the streets and you're compliant with all the regulations like GDPR, um, for example. In the meantime, um, the third party um, kind of contractors or in-house facility managers, um, they tend to be um, more technologically advanced and when it comes to the smart building technology, um, due to implementation of, at least in the UK and Ireland, implementation of smart meters, BMS systems, and um, which kind of naturally requires the um, some sort of platform connecting those um, different devices and um, enabling proactive and efficient control of the equipment uh, and making sure that the operations of the building running smoothly. So the main goal of those departments is um, access to the real-time data um, in order to kind of uh, ensure more proactive and, as I said, more preemptive, preemptive approach to any maintenance works. Now, uh, when it comes to the property or the asset managers, they are probably, uh, from at least my own experience, um, the slowest adopters of the technology, as we see that they operate mainly on the from the manual data collection 
um, stuff like Excel reports and uh, different um, on-site inspections, and um, which makes it a bit difficult to obviously make decisions um, in a timely manner and um, to ensure the full data transparency when it comes to um, data sharing and also data collecting. So that's um, that's kind of the main challenge for those players where um, they're risking um, the ability of having the full image of what's happening in their portfolio, um, which kind of causes um, a risk of making a poor decision or not making um, any kind of uh, initiative that could prevent certain risks related to the ESG. Last but not least, the um, sustainability managers. Um, the ESG departments, they probably more of a like a recent adoption uh, to a lot of companies' um, operations. They're faced with a lot of pressure to comply with the different regulations, collect reports from different stakeholders, including the facility managers and property managers. And again, they need that data visibility um, and data quality in order to fully assess and see the bigger picture of um, how their portfolio is performing at the moment and where they need to be, um, let's say, for the 2030 and 2050 goals. To quickly summarize um, the challenges of all those departments, we see that data collection is one of the most significant challenges when it comes to um, ESG reporting. There are various reasons for that. Um, first and foremost, it's um, every building is like a snowflake. There's a different infrastructure in place, um, different devices that speak different protocols. They have different um, the file formats. So um, collecting all of this data um, is challenging, is a time consuming process. Um, also, the, some of the information comes from third party um, stakeholders like utility providers, your BMS um, contractors. Um, your tenants or um, let's say the people who are doing the inspections on site. So it is a, it is a challenge um, time-wise. It is a challenge to analyze and cleanse the data. It's a challenge to normalize it um, to the same standards. Um, so the landscape of the data collection is complex by default and making it a bit difficult to integrate any kind of data management solutions because um, the baseline is uh, the lack of consistency across different um, data sources that we have. Now, on top of that, um, the poor data quality is another um, kind of big challenge um, when it comes to the real estate. Um, and not only real estate sector, but all the sectors. Um, it could be driven by um, probably uh, faulty devices, the inconsistency of data, um, missing data or incomplete reports that could happen for various reasons, whether it's a human error, uh, whether it's the reports are being done on the um, different frequencies, and it's really difficult to kind of align and again normalize um, the consistent data flow. And why is it important? So once um, you have the automated data collection or consistent data flow, it makes sure that um, you can make timely decisions, you can have timely analysis, and you're always um, kind of aiming to act a bit more preemptively and proactively rather than um, kind of an aftermath of um, something um, that have risks to the performance of your portfolio. Um, all in all, as I mentioned, the, this is the big investment risks. Um, uh, due to various different uh, departments being impacted when it comes to the um, asset investments um, and the overall regulatory pressures to uh, report on certain things um, when you don't have the underlying data uh, in a consistent and a high quality uh, manner. So how can we help? So um, the way that we work with our clients in the real estate sector in particular or across different um, verticals is um, obviously by implementing the energy management platform. So when choosing and selecting an energy management platform, I want you to pay attention into um, how the data comes in and how the data flows out. So um, 
within the Space Fuel Energy Platform, uh, we enable you to collect data from various different sources um, at the same time. So it's an automated co collection of data from things like smart meters, data lakes, um, IoT devices, or any automated uh, equipment that is in place. Um, as well as um, there's a various ingestion routes because again, those devices, they different. Um, if you're operating global portfolio, there's uh, obviously discrepancies in the way this they operate. So you need to make sure that um, the data goes into the platform um, in a consistent flow. So we have things like um, public API or the standard uh, integration routes like FTP or SFTP that enables um, that consistent flow of data into our platform. Um, to make it even easier to our clients and especially um, the clients that are outside of the kind of um, FM and the ESCO um, realm is that we have about 500 native integrations available in our platform. So we, which means essentially there are over 500 different devices, BMS systems, gateways, um, utility um, portals, data collection portals that we can um, integrate with just a, a couple of clicks and start this information flow into that platform. So once the data is in, what we do, um, we give you all the tools in the world that you might need to analyze the data in real time. Now, when I talk about real time, um, our frequency could go up down to five minutes, which obviously not real, real time, but as real as it could be. Um, so you can have um, a timely kind of reporting schedule, decision making ability, and overall kind of overview of your portfolio. Now, when I talked about the importance of um, collaboration when it comes to the um, implementation of ESG platform or ESG, um, sorry, initiatives, um, people don't work in isolation, so they need to make sure that the data is shared, is available, the transparency um, is there. So it's important that all the data going into the platform being analyzed is um, easily shareable to or integratable into the, any third party solutions that, for example, maybe IT team or um, AMs or PMs might have. So we have that um, uh, push API availability as well as just a manual raw data extractions that whatever you see in the platform could be easily uh, taken out and integrated automatically to other solutions um, if you have them. So when it comes to the data collection challenges, um, how we help our partners is, is uh, as I mentioned, we have 500 integrations. Um, you can see some of them uh, on this slide. Um, so essentially they range from, as I said, different IoT devices, um, the most kind of utilized uh, BMS systems, and it just takes a couple of clicks, um, like it's showing on the slide at the moment, to um, start the data flow into the platform very intuitive, easy um, to kind of uh, kickstart the process. You don't need to be super technical to, um, <laughs> to be able to do that. And um, on top of those integrations, we have, um, as I said, um, manual data uploads. So you just be able to insert the data um, through the UI of the platform or by uploading CSV or um, Excel files, because we know not every building will have the automated um, gateway for to push the data. Um, now, I keep saying automated, so why is it important? We kind of established that the streamlining your day-to-day -day activities is one of the key challenges for any departments, um, especially when it comes to the um, data management and data collections. This being a very time-consuming and labor-intensive process, you want to be able just to do a couple of clicks and see um, and view any type of analysis that you need. Um, so our platform is allowing you um, things like visualizing the data from five minute frequency up to an aggregation to yearly consumption. Uh, you can easily normalize the data um, by um, square meters, um, by uh, occupancy uh, and different other custom ratios that you might need. So all the calculation is already done for you. So you don't need to kind of uh, worry about um, those aspects and you can focus more on uh, the initiatives and overall kind of a more strategic decisions that you need to make. Um, the poor data quality challenge um, is also needs to be addressed in an automatic way. 
um, again, to kind of to aid your teams to uh, free up their time from boring repetitive tasks to start with, and also um, to have something reliable that will be checking your data quality 24-7 and 365 days a week. So we have um, a data quality app built in with our platform. As you can see on the slides, it's kind of reporting on um, different um, sub-meter levels, uh, meter levels. So you see the data flowing in uh, pink and green and any gaps that might have occurred in red. So you see the data completeness percentage um, for some of the EEG reports, I think the requirements about 80% of the data completeness. So you can easily visualize that within the um, EMS platforms. Uh, to make it even more automated and I guess easy to operate, um, things like built-in alerts um, is quite a helpful use, um, a tool. So um, we track about six different um, alerts within our platform, um, no data being one of them. You're able to see and set up different thresholds for that will trigger the alerts when it comes to cost or performance or consumption. So you'll be flagged, a specific user will be flagged within the platform when something occurs by email or you can see them um, by logging in. Um, so once we kind of made sure that the, the data is in the platform, um, it's there, it's quality, it's consistent, um, it's um, kind of you want to go a step uh, further and see how um, any energy efficiency um, projects that you might be implementing in the building um, behaving in real time. So on the slide here, you see our MNV module um, in action. So essentially, um, you see the blue line, which is the baseline, which you can calculate within platform again by doing a couple of clicks and um, presets. Essentially, what it's going to do, it's going to um, uh, calculate the behavior of the building without any changes in place and then once the in this pro, for example example um, pv plant was installed uh, you can see the savings achieved in green so this block is essentially helping you to monitor um, return on investment in real time so um, it will be updated every 15 minutes so instead of waiting for something go going um, sideways or going south you'll be able to prevent and kind of uh, avoid any potential losses to um, your project. And it's also quite handy because, um, again, the calculations are automated, so you able to view it in um, the savings um, when it comes to energy, the carbon emission avoided, and you can view it, as you can see, in the accumulated um, way as well. This module allows you to track projects on from the submetering level all the way to the portfolio lab view. So you can see how combination groups of different projects um, operate. Again, a useful tool for um, tracking return on investment and reporting it to your, um, I guess, investors or banks or whoever's financing the projects, as well as different sustainability reporting metrics that you need to track and um, report on. Now, when we zoom out from kind of a more of a day-to-day -day operation and analytics of the um, buildings, um, within our uh, solution, you can also see a portfolio view. So that's kind of a completely zooming out of um, one building and viewing it more on a global or international, um, from international standpoint. You can see that um, the red bubbles, green bubbles and um, amber ones um, identify a uh, and represent the buildings that are underperforming, obviously in red. Um, the green ones are safe um, assets. So when doing the first kind of a, a sense checks and filtering across your portfolio, you can see easily uh, which assets you need to focus on and um, you'll be also be able to view certain um, energy efficiency recommendations within this uh, module that you could implement to improve um, consumption of that building. Um, again, um, it's all real time, so AI powered um, frees up a lot of um, decision making um, time and um, it's a reliable um, um, kind of tool for you to utilize. 
Um, everything you've seen within uh, the platform so far, and it's uh, all just related to kind of a day-to-day -day, um, operation of these two departments, um, you'll be able to share in dashboards. Um, again, the stakeholder involvement, engagement is quite important. Um, when it comes to reporting, you want to stay up to date um, as much as possible. So the dashboards that you're viewing here um, at the moment, um, they're being updated every 15 minutes. You can share them by showcasing them in the lobby of your office building to ensure that your tenants know of the air quality and the current consumption of the building, or you can share the link with um, your investors so they can track your, for example, solar PV um, improvement projects uh, in real time instead of, I guess, calling you every week to see how is it going. Um, on top of the dashboards, we have the standard kind of uh, static reports, um, which you can preset to be sent at any frequency to any email box that you need it to, um, but you have kind of these two options. So to sort of summarize everything we've talked about today, um, it's important to know that um, when it comes to addressing the data management challenges um, for the ESG report, in particular the E part of the ESG, digitalization of uh, platforms like the energy management um, platform could be really useful, not only for the FM teams, um, sustainability teams, but also to a wider company. So it encourages the data transparency, um, stakeholder collaboration and engagement so that the impacts of your sustainability efforts could be more effective, long-term and um, easily shareable. So when picking the EMS, um, you can see on the right, uh, our solution has been um, selected in the leader slash innovator quadrant by the independent assessor called Verdantix, um, two, two years in a row for now, um, but hopefully we'll keep on moving in the right direction, delivering <clears throat> best in class solution um, for our customers. So when choosing the EMS, the important aspects are, sorry, <clears throat> that um, it's a hardware agnostic system. So you're not um, kind of locked into uh, purchasing or um, operating only certain types of devices to be able to have the data visualization. So you should be able to um, get the data in regardless of its source or underlying infrastructure. You can also should be able to share the data by open API to any other solutions or any other parties, platforms, or similarly um, platforms and uh, portals like Gresby where they need to share the data um, in an automatic way. Um, you need to focus on the data quality. So a lot of EMS, um, uh, not a lot of EMS, but you need to find the EMS that has the data quality checks, whether it's alerts or um, fault detection. And the more technical, technologically advanced automated it is, the better. So you don't need to worry about it and check it all the time. You need to find it trustworthy, a platform who will do that for you. Um, and again, keep dwelling on the collaboration and cross-departmental uh, involvement. The platform needs to be intuitive. So um, in my experience, a lot of clients, they um, argue that they don't have the technical knowledge or understanding to operate the platform and it takes time to train the um, teams and employees. And especially when sharing um, any kind of information, it could be a bit overwhelming for, let's say, non-technical uh, players. So um, finding a solution that's intuitive, um, that's easy to understand for anyone, uh, from tenants to your FM or energy manager, um, and you're not charged per user, so you could just give access to whoever needs to get access to. Real-time data is the most important thing um, because a lot of platforms, uh, we find that um, they take the data in, but the, um, the frequency is based on the billing, so whether it's monthly, quarterly, or yearly, so you don't have that um, kind of a hand on the pulse when it comes to data management. So focus on the real team data um, platform. And goes without saying, make sure the platform is secure. Um, our um, Space Wheel Energy is fully certified with ISO 27001 and 5001 certifications to making sure that all the data is safe and all the energy um, efficiency initiatives are done within 
uh, the regulated um, landscape. Uh, when going beyond um, the implementation of the EMS, um, the good advice is to kind of um, invest into the smart building technologies like IoT, smart meters, uh, more progressive BMS systems that is going to streamline the data collection process in the future and um, essentially is going to pay out um, really quickly um, and avoid um, challenges like I've mentioned previously, like poor data collection um, and the difficulty integrating different sources of data. Um, standardizing data formats is another one. So whenever you implement certain, um, I guess, devices, making sure that they all speak the same protocol, they have the same formats, whether it's a CSV or um, any other ones, um, it's all homogenic. So it's easier for you in the future to um, analyze the data or do whatever you will with it. Um, again, training and best practices for your team to making sure that everyone is aware of the benefits of data management platform that's open for everyone and um, kind of encourage the involvement of the utility providers or tenants to, in order to share uh, information in a more timely manner and um, making sure that everyone is playing towards the same goal of um, achieving that and sustainable future um, by the set targets. Now, um, we unfortunately, we don't have time left for the um, Q&A sessions, but um, um, here, here I'm sharing my um, contact details. So uh, feel free to contact me with any kind of questions you might have um, about the topic of this presentation or anything to do with the energy management um, systems, um, specifically spaceful, um, but not limited to. And I'll be happily um, be able to help you and assist you with anything. Thank you for your time today. You'll be able to get the copy of this presentation um, emailed to you and um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.